In this short tutorial, I'm going to quickly show how to create a database in Microsoft Access by implementing my tables and relationships that I have here in my entity relationship diagram. So with any database, before we start creating it, we first build out a normalized entity relationship diagram that we determine after we've completed our requirements analysis. So this is my diagram I'm going to implement. I'm going to go to my access database that I previously created in my prior tutorial, which you could um, check out uh, if you need to know how to start a database to begin with. Uh, we're going to pick off from going into the create tab on the ribbon bar and we're going to go right into table design. And it's the best way to create our entities or our tables. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to type in our field name and pick a data type that makes the most sense. I'm going to pick an auto number in this case. And I'm going to set this first field as a primary key. So why it's still highlighted, I'm going to click on PK for the primary key. I'm going to enter first name for my next field. And in this case, I'm going to use short text and I'm going to go down to the field size and set it to something that makes the most sense. I'm going to use size of 30. And I'm going to choose it to be required. That means it has to be filled in. I'm going to do last name, short text again. I'm going to do 30. I'm going to do address, short text. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go to 100 characters for the address. And I'm going to make it required as well meaning we need to fill in the address. City, short text, I'll do 30, required. State, short text of two for the state code. And zip code, I'll do short text of five. I'll just do the basic uh, US five digit zip code. Um, and then I'm going to add in another field, uh, which is in my design called faculty ID. In my design, this is a foreign key. I can't set this as a foreign key yet because I haven't uh, created my faculty table. So just keep that in mind. We set the relationships. We'll make that a foreign key then. I'm going to turn this one to a number field. And I'm going to leave it optional. So I'm not going to make it required uh, at this point. I can hit Control S or I can click the X to close out to get prompted to be saved. And I will choose yes and I will call this TBL students. The next table I'm going to create, I'll go back to the create table design. And I will do my course table. So I'm going to have course ID in this one. I'm going to have an auto number again. It's going to be the primary key again the course name. This will be a short text. We'll do 100 characters for the course name. And every course needs to have a name. Course description. This one is also going to be filled in. I'm going to do this as a longer text. And I'm going to make this required too. And then I'm going to do credit hours. And this will be a new number field for the number of credits and we'll make this required as well. With this one, we'll hit control S to save and we'll call this TBL courses. I have a faculty table or entity that looks very much like my student entity. To save some time, I'm going to go over here and hit control C and control V to make a copy of the students table and I'm going to rename it and I'm going to change it to TBL faculty and I have some options here for paste options there's no data currently so if I leave it as structure and data it's fine but in a case like this I typically would just want the structure and I'll hit OK now what I want to do with table faculty I want to right click on it and I want to go back into design view and here I want to change some things around. I want to change student ID basically to faculty. 
ID. And this foreign key field will not exist in my faculty table. So I'm going to right click and delete that row. And it's going to say it's going to require me to delete one or more indexes. Am I sure? I'm going to choose yes. So essentially, now my faculty table is created very quickly and simply. Uh, I'll close it out. I'll click yes to save the changes. And I'll have one more entity left to create. So I'll go back to create table design. This is my registration table. It's going to be made up of student ID and that's going to be uh, an integer or a number field and it's going to be made up of course ID and that's going to be a number field. Now you might wonder why uh, I haven't set a primary key yet and if you go back to my design you'll see this table has two foreign keys that make up the primary key. It's a concatenated key scenario. To do that, we're going to hold the shift key and get both of these rows highlighted. And then we're going to choose primary key. And that'll give us the actual concatenated key we need. And then one more uh, field we need is the GPA that the student earns in this course. It won't be mandatory. It'll get filled in once they're done completing the course, according to my design. Uh, this will be a number uh, which in this case here we'll go with number and if we look at our data types for number down here we have a decimal data type and we can set it as a decimal so for like a GPA 3.0, 4.0, uh, 3.5 uh, those types of things is what we can use in the decimal field uh, and we can tweak the precision and the scale and formatting and such uh, but I won't get into that for this discussion those are some more advanced uh, field properties we can apply. Uh, and now I have this table. I will hit save and I will call this TBL registration. So at this point, our database is built as far as the entities go. Uh, before we can add data, we have to set our relationships uh, bef as our last step here. So we're going to go to database tools now. We're going to go to relationships. And over on the right here, we see our tables that we have in our database that we can add. I'm going to hold the shift key and highlight all four of those and click add selected tables. Now this is going to look much like your entity relationship diagram, but it's not established a relationship yet. So I'm going to move some things around, kind of make it look the same as my entity relationship diagram. So I'm just going to click and drag and then resize objects. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the uh, foreign key uh, constraints essentially. So the relationship. So faculty ID is the primary key here. It's got a foreign key over here in table students. So we click on it, drag it and drop it. We With this pop-up for edit relationships, we want to make sure on the left is our primary key table and on our right is our related table and faculty ID is our common field that they have. We'll see it's a relationship type of one to many. We also want to check this box, Enforce Referential Integrity. That's going to make sure that any faculty ID I enter in the student's table has to exist in the faculty table before we can add that information for the faculty number in the student's uh, table data. So we hit Create, and you'll see it's a one to many, the symbol one, and the sideways eight or the infinity symbol, meaning one to many in Microsoft Access. It's also bold and dark. And that tells me that enforced referential integrity is established. If I do this to course ID to course ID here, same thing, double check the left and the right in the fields to make sure you dragged and dropped correctly. Check the checkbox, click create. And the same with faculty, I'm sorry, not faculty ID, but the same with student ID here to student ID there and enforce and click create. If you ever make a mistake with setting your relationships, say you didn't click the enforce or you dragged one field to the wrong field, you can double click on a line and it will repop open the edit relationships, but that's not going to let you actually get right into it uh, to see the one that you want to change. What you want to do is actually right click on the line and edit that relationship and now you'll see it pre-filled with the one that that line stands for, and you can make modifications if necessary. All relationships should be refined and perfected before you start putting data in, if at all possible. Uh, the time when that doesn't happen, if you're making changes to an existing database. Uh, but when you're building a new database, again, what you're doing is creating your design, 
creating your structures and then setting your relationships when it comes to access. So if you were to lay this over or look at this and then look at the relationships here in access, they're going to look very similar. If we close this now, we're going to want to save these structure changes and click yes. And if we go back to our database tools and relationships, you'll see that they are still in place. That concludes building our database based upon our entity relationship diagram and access. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk about populating the data and then writing some queries to work with the data. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to use the comments below. Please consider subscribing to my channel and sharing it with others. Uh, and if you could always reach out to me by going to professorwolf.com and finding my contact information. Thank you.